Okay, so today is day 98. And um, because of the, the quality of trying to record while I was out of town um, and my voice being a little bit gone, I decided to wait until we came back. Uh, so we did get the one day while we were while we were out of town, but we're going to double up here to get caught up. And um, day 98 is what we're reading from today. First Samuel 6 through 8, Judges 2021 and Psalm 86. Uh, after today, we're going to spend uh, from day 99 to day 105 in a Messianic checkpoint. It's our first Messianic checkpoint, and we'll be reading in the uh, Gospel of John, and we'll be leaving the psalmist for a while to be in Proverbs. But for today, we're at the end of this uh, time period and, and day 98. First Samuel, actually, we'll, we'll start with Judges uh, 20, Israel's War with Benjamin. Then all the Israelites were united as one man from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, including those from the, across the Jordan in the land of Gilead. The entire community assembled in the presence of the Lord at Mizpah. The leaders of all the people and all the tribes of Israel, 40,000, 400,000 warriors armed with swords, took their positions in the assembly of the people of God. Word soon reached the land of Benjamin that the other tribes had gone up to Mizpah. The Israelites then asked how this terrible crime had happened. The Levite, the husband of the woman who had been murdered, said, My concubine and I came to spend the night in Gibeah, a town that belongs to the people of Benjamin. That night, some of the leading citizens of Gibeah surrounded the house, planning to kill me, and they raped my concubine until she was dead. So I cut her body into twelve pieces and sent the pieces throughout the territory assigned to Israel, for these men have committed a terrible and shameful crime. Now then, all of you, the entire community of Israel, must decide here and now what should be done about this. And all the people rose to their feet in unison and declared, None of us will return home. No, not even one of us. Instead, this is what we will do to Gibeah. We will draw lots to decide who will attack it. One-tenth of the men from each tribe will be chosen to supply the warriors with food, and the rest of us will take revenge on Gibeah of Benjamin for the shameful thing they have done in Israel. So all the Israelites were completely united, and they gathered together to attack the town. The Israelites sent messengers to the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What a terrible thing have you has been done among you. Give us those evil men, those troublemakers from Gibeah, so we can execute them and purge Israel of this evil. But the people of Benjamin would not listen. Instead, they came from their towns and gathered at Gibeah to fight the Israelites. In all, 26,000 of their warriors, armed with swords, arrived in Gibeah to join the 700 elite troops who lived there. Among Benjamin's elite troops, 700 were left-handed, and each of them could sling a rock with hit and hit a target within a hair's breadth without missing. Israel had 400,000 experienced soldiers armed with swords, not counting Benjamin's warriors. Before the battle, the Israelites went to Bethel and asked God, which tribe should go first to attack the people of Benjamin. The Lord answered, Judah is to go first. So the Israelites left early the next morning and camped near Gibeah. Then they advanced towards Gibeah to attack the men of Benjamin. But Benjamin's warriors who were defending the town came out and killed 22,000 Israelites on the battlefield that day. But the Israelites encouraged each other and took their positions again at the same place they had fought the previous day. For they had gone up to Bethel and wept in the presence of the Lord until evening. They had asked the Lord, should we fight against our relatives from Benjamin again? And the Lord said, go out and fight against them. So the next day they went out again to fight against the men of Benjamin. But the men of Benjamin killed another 18,000 Israelites, all of whom were experienced with the sword. Then all the Israelites went up to Bethel and wept in the presence of the Lord and fasted until evening. They also brought burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. The Israelites went up seeking direction from the Lord. In those days, the Ark of the Covenant of God was in Bethel. And Phinehas, son of Eleazar, and grandson of Aaron, was the priest. The Israelites asked the Lord, should we fight against our relatives from Benjamin again, or should we stop? The Lord said, go. Tomorrow I will hand them over to you. So the Israelites set an ambush all around Gibeah. They went out on the third day and took their positions at the same place as before. When the men of Benjamin came out to attack, they were drawn away from the town. And as they had done before, they began to kill 
began to kill the Israelites. About 30 Israelites died in the open fields and along the roads, one leading to Bethel and the other leading back to Gibeah. Then the warriors of Benjamin shouted, We're defeating them as we did before. But the Israelites had planned in advance to run away so that the men of Benjamin would chase them along the roads and be drawn away from the town. <clears throat> when the main group of Israelite warriors reached Baal Tamar, they turned and took up their positions. Meanwhile, the Israelites hid in the ambush to the west of Gibeah, jumped up to fight. There were 10,000 <clears throat> elite Israelite troops who advanced against Gibeah. The fighting was so heavy that Benjamin didn't realize the impending disaster. So the Lord helped Israel defeat Benjamin. And that day, the Israelites killed 25,100 of Benjamin's warriors, all of whom were experienced swordsmen. Then the men of Benjamin saw they were being they were beaten. The Israelites had retreated from Benjamin's warriors in order to give those hiding in ambush more room to maneuver against Gibeah. Then those who were hiding rushed in from all sides and killed everyone in the town. They had arranged to send up a large cow of smoke from the town as a signal. When the Israelites saw the smoke, they turned and attacked Benjamin's warriors. By that time, Benjamin's warriors had killed about 30 Israelites, and they shouted, we're defeating them as we did in the first battle. But when the warriors of Benjamin looked behind them and saw the smoke rising into the sky from every part of the town, the men of Israel turned and attacked. At this point, the men of Benjamin became terrified because they realized disaster was close at hand. So they turned around and fled before the Israelites toward the wilderness. But they couldn't escape the battle, and the people who came out of the nearby towns were also killed. The Israelites surrounded the men of Benjamin and chased them relentlessly finally overtaking them east of Gibeah. That day, 18,000 of Benjamin's strongest warriors died in battle. The survivors fled into the wilderness toward the rock of Ramon. But Israel killed 5,000 of them along the road. They continued the chase until they had killed another 2,000 near Gidom. So that day, the tribe of Benjamin lost 25,000 strong warriors armed with swords, leaving only 600 men who escaped to the rock of Ramon, where they lived for four months. And the Israelites returned and slaughtered every living thing in all the towns, the people, the livestock, and everything they found. They also burned down all the towns they came to. Judges 21. Israel provides wives for Benjamin. The Israelites had vowed in Mizpah, we will never give our daughters in marriage to a man from the tribe of Benjamin. Now the people went to Bethel and sat in the presence of the Lord until evening, weeping loudly and bitterly. O oh Lord, God of Israel, they cried out, why has this happened in Israel? Now one of our tribes is missing from Israel. Early the next morning, the people built an altar and presented their burnt offerings and peace offerings on it. Then they said, who among the tribes of Israel did not join us at Mizpah when we held our assembly in the presence of the Lord? At that time, they had taken a solemn oath in the Lord's presence, vowing that anyone who refused to come would be put to death. The Israelites felt sorry for their brother Benjamin and said, Today, one of the tribes of Israel has been cut off. How can we find wives for the few who remain, since we have sworn by the Lord not to give them our daughters in marriage? So they asked, Who among the tribes of Israel did not join us at Mizpah when we assembled in the presence of the Lord? And they discovered that no one from Jabesh Gilead had attended the assembly. For after they counted all the people, no one from Jabesh Gilead was present. So the assembly sent 12,000 of their best warriors to Jabesh Gilead with orders to kill everyone there, including women and children. This is what you are to do, they said, completely destroy all the males and every woman who is not a virgin. Among the residents of Jabesh Gilead, they found 400 young virgins who had never slept with a man, and they brought them to the camp at Shiloh in the land of Canaan. The Israelite assembly sent a peace delegation to the remaining people of Benjamin, who were living at the Rock of Ramon. The men of Benjamin returned to their homes, and the 400 women of Jabesh Gilead, who had been spared, were given to them as wives. But there were not enough women for all of them. The people felt sorry for Benjamin because the Lord had made this gap among the tribes of Israel. So the elders of the assembly asked, how can we find wives for the few who remain? since the women of the tribe of Benjamin are dead. There must be heirs for the survivors, so that an entire tribe of Israel is not wiped out. 
we cannot give them our own daughters in marriage because we have sworn with a solemn oath that anyone who does this will fall under God's curse. Then they thought of the annual festival of the Lord held in Shiloh, south of Libna and north of Bethel, along the east side of the road that goes from Bethel to Shechem. They told the men of Benjamin, who still needed wives, go and hide in the vineyards. When you see the young women of Shiloh come out for their dances, rush out from the vineyards and take, and each of you take one of them home to the land of Benjamin to be, to be your wife. And when their fathers and brothers come up to us in protest, we will tell them, please be sympathetic. Let them have your daughters, for we didn't find wives for all of them when we destroyed Jabesh Gilead. And you are not guilty of breaking the vow, since you did not actually give your daughters to them in marriage. So the men of Benjamin did as they were told. Each man caught one of the women as she danced in the celebration and carried her off to be his wife. They returned to their own land, and they rebuilt their towns and lived in them. Then the people of Israel departed by tribes and families, and they returned to their own homes. In those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. 1 Samuel 6 The Philistines return the ark. The ark of the Lord remained in Philistia, Philistine territory seven months in all. Then the Philistines called in their priests and diviners and asked them, What should we do about the ark of the Lord? Tell us how to return it to its own country. Send the ark of the God of Israel back with a gift. They were told, send a gift off, guilt offering so the plague will stop. Then, if you are healed, you will know it was his hand that caused the plague. What sort of guilt offering should we send, they asked. And they were told, since the plague has struck you, both you and your five rulers, make five gold tumors and five gold rats, just like those that have ravaged your land. Make these things to show honor to the God of Israel. Perhaps then he will stop afflicting you your gods, and your land. Don't be stubborn and rebellious as Pharaoh and the Egyptians were. By the time God was finished with them, they were eager to let Israel go. Now build a new cart and find two cows that have just given birth to calves. Make sure the cows have never been yoked to a cart. Hitch the cows to the cart, but shut their calves away from them in a pen. Put the ark of the Lord on the cart, and beside it place a chest containing the gold rats and the gold tumors you are sending as a guilt offering. Then let the cows go wherever they want. If they cross the border of our land and go to Beth Shemesh, we will know it was the Lord who brought this great disaster upon us. If they don't, we will know it was not his hand that caused the plague. It came simply by chance. So these instructions were carried out. Two cows were hitched to the cart and their newborn calves were shut up in the pen. In a pen. Then the ark of the Lord and the chest containing the gold rats and gold tumors were placed on the cart. And sure enough, Without veering off in other directions, the cows went straight along the road toward Beth Shemesh, lowering, lowing as they went. The Philistine rulers followed them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. The people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting wheat in the valley, and when they saw the ark, they were overjoyed. The cart came into the field of a man named Joshua and stopped beside a large, beside a large rock. So the people broke up the wood of the cart for a fire and killed the cows and sacrificed them to the Lord as a burnt offering. Several men of the tribe of Levi lifted the ark of the Lord and the chest containing the gold rats and the gold tumors from the cart and placed them on the large rock. Many sacrifices and burnt offerings were offered to the Lord that day by the people of Beth Shemesh. The five Philistine rulers watched all this and then returned to Ekron that same day. The five gold tumors sent by the Philistines as a guilt offering to the Lord were gifts from the rulers of Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. The five gold rats represented the five Philistine towns and their surrounding villages, which were controlled by the five rulers. The large rock at Beth Shemesh, where they set the Ark of the Lord, still stands in the field of Joshua as a witness to what happened there. The Ark moved to Kiriath Jerim, but the Lord killed 70 men from Beth Shemesh because they looked into the Ark of the Lord. And the people mourned greatly because of what the Lord had done. Who is able to stand in the presence of the Lord, this God, holy God, they cried out. Where can we send the ark from here? So they sent messengers to the people at Kirath Jerim and told them, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come here and get it. First Samuel 7 
So the men of Kirath Jerim came to get the Ark of the Lord. They took it to the hillside home of Abinadab and ordained Eleazar, his son, to be in charge of it. The Ark remained in Kirith Jerim for a long time, twenty years in all. During that time, all Israel mourned because it seemed the Lord had abandoned them. Samuel leads Israel to victory. Then Samuel said to the people of Israel, If you want to return to the Lord with all your hearts, get rid of your foreign gods and your images of Ashtoreth. Turn your hearts to the Lord and obey him alone. Then he will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites got rid of all of their images of Baal and Ashtoreth and worshipped only the Lord. Then Samuel told them, Gather all of Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mizpah, and in a great ceremony drew water from a well, and poured it out before the Lord. They also went without food all day, and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. It was at Mizpah that Samuel became Israel's judge. When the Philistine rulers heard that Israel had gathered at Mizpah, they mobilized their army and advanced. The Israelites were badly frightened when they learned that the Philistines were approaching. Don't stop pleading with the Lord, our God, to save us from the Philistines, they begged Samuel. So Samuel took a young lamb and offered it to the Lord as a whole burnt offering. He pleaded with the Lord to help Israel, and the Lord answered him. Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived to attack Israel. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from the heaven that day. And the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. The men of Israel chased them from Izpah to a place below Bethkar, slaughtering them all along the way. Samuel then took a large stone and placed it between the towns of Mizpah and Jeshunah. He named it Ebenezer, which means the stone of help. For he said, up to this point, the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and didn't invade Israel again for some time. And throughout Samuel's lifetime, the Lord's powerful hand was raised against the Philistines. The Israelite villages near Ekron and Gath that the Philistines had captured were restored to Israel, along with the rest of the territory that the Philistines had taken. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites in those days. Samuel continued to as Israel's judge for the rest of his life. Each year he traveled around, setting up his court, first at Bethel, then at Gilgal, and then at Mizpah. He judged the people of Israel at each of these places. Then he would return to his home at Ramah, and he would hear cases there too. And Samuel built an altar to the Lord at Ramah. Israel requests a king. As Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. Joel and Abijah, his eldest sons, held court in Beersheba. But they were not like their father, for they were greedy for money. They accepted bribes and perverted justice. Finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Look, they told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. Samuel was displeased with their request and went to the Lord for guidance. Do everything they say to you, the Lord replied, for they are rejecting me, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt, they have continually abandoned me and followed their gods, and now they are giving you the same retreatment. Do as they ask, but solemnly warn them about the way a king will reign over them. Samuel warns against a kingdom. So Samuel passed on the Lord's warning to the people who were asking him for a king. This is how a king will reign over you, Samuel said. The king will draft your sons and assign them to his chariots and his charioteers, making them run before his chariots. Some will be generals and captains in his army. Some will be forced to plow in his fields and harvest his crops, and some will make his weapons and chariot equipment. The king will take your daughters from you and force them to cook and bake and make perfumes for him. He will take away the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his own officials. He will take a tenth of your grain and your harvest grapes, your grape harvest, and distribute it among his officers and attendants. He will take your male and female slaves and demand the finest of your cattle and donkeys for his own use. He will demand a tenth of your flocks and you will be his slaves. When that day comes, you will beg for relief from this king you are demanding, but then the Lord will not help you. But the people refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king, they said. We want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. So Samuel repeated to, to the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord replied, 
do as they say and give them a king. Then Samuel agreed and sent the people home. Psalm 86, a prayer of David. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I am in trouble, and you will answer me. No pagan God is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. All the nations you made will come and bow before you, Lord. They will praise your holy name, for you are great and, per and perform wonderful deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. With all my heart, I praise you, O Lord, my God. I will give glory to your name forever, for your love for me is very great. You have rescued me from the depths of death. O oh God, insolent people rise up against me. A violent gang is trying to kill me. You mean nothing to them, but you, O oh Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Look down and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Save me, the son of your servant. Send me a sign of your favor. Then those who hate me will be put to shame. For you, O oh Lord, help and comfort me. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your child, your servant, is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.